Good morning. Let's see if this is working. Can you hear me, guys? Um, I have uh, five amazing women with me this morning. My name is Jana. I will be the moderator this morning to talk about, or is it still morning? Actually, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, we will be talking about data-driven innovation across different industries. So we assembled uh, these uh, ladies here who are working in different industries. We have Maggie, who is a head of data at City. We have Celine, who is a head of data science and innovation in AXA. Then we have um, Judon, who is a uh, I'm now leading the data analysis team in Shopee. And then we have Jen, who is uh, working at Facebook, and she is a, um, um, Jen, where do I have you? <laughs> Partner at Marketing Science. And then we have uh, Sigrid, who is a lead data scientist at uh, Stock Exchange. What we will do today, uh, when I heard the subject, when Anne came to me and she said, let's talk about data-driven innovation. And uh, I said, oh, this is great. Data-driven is kind of everywhere. So let's uh, share the experiences that you ladies are using the data in your day-to-day -day job. And maybe we should start about the data-related kind of uh, things and procedures you run in your profession and in your job. So maybe introduce yourself a little bit more how you landed in this particular um, position and what it means for you data-driven and data. Maggie? Hello, everyone. So um, I work at Citibank for the consumer bank, and I look after all data technology uh, across uh, all our APAC and uh, EMEA countries. Um, so in that technology, I, I basically uh, provide all the technology that data scientists need, all the tools that the data scientists actually need. Um, I, I look after, so, so I own the uh, data lake, um, our real-time event hub, I build the real-time use cases that says what's the best next action for our customers at this point in time, what are the best offers to, to, to give our customers at this point in time, um, our risk analytics, all of the real-time and old times. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I, I own both the old and the new technology. Um, and um, how I got into data, because <laughs> Jana always wants me to talk about how I got, got yeah, into data. Yeah, uh, because this is very interesting because Maggie used to be a head of infrastructure. So how do you go from infrastructure to data? That's an interesting transition. Right, so uh, basically I only started my job in July this year. Uh, prior to that, I've always been managing infrastructure for the consum same consumer business. Um, uh, last year sometime I decided actually I was really, really interested in data and that was the area and the field that I wanted to get into. So the first thing I did was actually made sure I was relevant enough to say I want to get into that field. So I got involved in lots of external things, including Jan, <laughs> you know, trying to get to know Jana and Neil in the back, you know, most, most data professionals know. Um, I, I ran without even being in data. I, I uh, with the Singapore Computer Society, I ran a woman in data analytics conference where I then met lots more uh, data professionals. Um, I went and read things up and I ran and register for a course in NUS. Um, having done all of that and feel like actually I can reasonably talk about why I'm passionate in getting into data, then the next thing I needed to do was convince my um, company that I was the best person for the job. So I think I'm this is interesting as well, right? How <laughs> yeah. do you convince your company coming, you know, such a doing yes. such a leap? Right? Yeah. Um, so the um, so I, I first had to um, actually convince my. Uh, business stakeholders, in fact, you know, the guy who, who, who needs the business analytics. And, and he comes from, um, he had only just got joined the company a year ago, coming from eBay. Um, so I knew, actually, one of his frustrations joining uh, Citibank was he didn't know how to execute at the same speed as eBay <laughs> so, <laughs> at City. So I actually went uh, and, and put myself in front of him. Um, I, um, I then... Um, told him that I know exactly all the issues you are having and I am the very person that can actually help you solve them. Um, I said, I actually said to him, I'm not going to pretend I'm a data expert because I'm not, 
but because you are a data expert, why do you want me to be a data expert? That's so, smart. This is you know, great. So like, <laughs> then, um, then I had to do the uh, influencing because I had been managing infrastructure for the consumer business for uh, four years prior to that. Um, I actually want, went to talk to all my previous customers who had. I had built a very good brand and, and reputation with, and basically got their sponsorship, um, telling them that the same way that I succeeded in uh, infrastructure, I will succeed in, in, in data. So then my new stakeholder went and checked with his, leader, his team uh, peers, and they all basically said, yes, Maggie is your person. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now we have Celine, and Celine as well is coming from slightly different background. She's coming from marketing, and we know that marketing, it's, uh, it's all about data today and technologies. So it's not such a kind of strange change, but it's interesting coming from automotive into insurance industry. So what was this tra transition for you about? Yeah, so um, my uh, my focus is, so we're running some of the uh, um, um, same use cases as what you as you said internally, but for me data, and I think the topic is data-driven innovation across industry. There's the innovation part and there is the across industry that is very important. Today, our work, the business model are changing. So I come from the automotive industry and my previous job was, oh my God, autonomous vehicle is coming. Uh, how will we survive? And this is where all the car makers are mov moving into mobility. So a new type of business model, you know, with the arrival of Uber or Grab in the market. Uh, how could those guys be born? They were born because they had access to your real-time geolocalization data. And Uber created Uber and Grab created Grab. It's not Apple or Samsung or whoever. It's not the hardware, even not, not hardware, the software manufacturer who is actually... Um, uh, creating all the servicing around it. And so they were able to create uh, Grab because uh, Apple and Samsung and Google were sharing the geolocalization data, instant geolocalization data. So for me, um, I've been working on new business model and how the world is changing with the arrival of the sharing economy because you do have access to people data and you are able now through platform uh, to propose new type of services. Uh, we are going to an ownership word to a usage word. We don't want to own anything, especially the young generation. I, I used to work in car manufacturing for like eight years in an R&D center. I never owned a car, really. I don't see the point. Uh, it's, a, it's an object that is like very expensive, very like you need to maintain, you need to pay parking, you need to pay fuel, and then, and then you have the chance of driving in the traffic when it's raining and you know. Come did on, you, you know, did this you is share this opinion while you were still working at the automotive Yes, I did. Industry. This is why I was, I, I was, I was in charge of uh, mobility and new business model because I'm like, I'm sure that a lot of people feel the same way yeah. I do. I do prefer to use a Grab or a DD in China for that matter, uh, rather than owning my own car and having the pleasure to, you know, uh, spend time in traffic, wasting time, my hands on the wheel. You know, that's why I was really well, good. Someone, someone enjoys it. But uh, let's talk about your transition from automotive. Yes, and obviously R and and very innovative uh, industry yeah. from this perspective. Yeah. Going to quite traditional insurance. Yeah, business. very traditional yeah. insurance How was business. That? Um, I, th I think it, it's about curiosity um, because um, there was this uh, thinking uh, that, um, so my job was in monetizing data, so creating new business model with partner. I was working with Didi in China and Alibaba, Tongshun, uh, in sharing data to create new type of services for the car. And um, the industry thinks that 80% of your revenue of monetizing car data will come from insurance. They say, yeah, pay as you drive, pay how you drive. And I, I was not seeing the business model going on. I was like, how will it work? You know, like all the car manufacturer will put their, all their data into big data dump and all the insurer will come and then pick it up. You know, how, how is it working? So I wanted to understand insurance. What about insurance? And I think that no one understands insurance, to be honest. And so well, there is lots of statistics and mathematics behind the insurance models. So. Yes, but today using very not behavioral type of data. So uh, that, that's, that's the thing. It's like uh, actuaries have been using uh, data and statistics for ages already, but um, are not 
able today to use real-time instant data in order to do their pricing. So, um, and so I wanted to understand uh, uh, insurance and how it's working and what would be the value of the car data for an insurance company. And then I go into an insurance company and I'm like, okay, everybody's wrong. <laughs> Everybody thinks that the insurer will be paying something, but that's not how the word of tomorrow is gonna is gonna work. And so now we've been focusing also on uh, cr um, creating new type of product uh, that are more insurance usage-based product, but with our partner. So for example, we did launch a product with Grab uh, in 2016 called Pay As You Grab, uh, that was targeting the part-time drive, Grab driver um, that uh, wanted to part-time uh, drive for Grab and had an insurance, commercial insurance that were, they were only paying to the kilometer. So how did we do it? We partner with Grab, we exchange our data with Grab, and thanks to Grab data, we're able to do uh, a product, um, uh, a, a usage-based pricing dedicated for the driver without having to install a box, an app, or whatever. You know, we're just already using the existing ecosystem and our partner in order to create new value proposition for the customer. Okay, let's stay in a finance industry and let's go to Sigrid because uh, um, so we do it a little bit more in a structured way. So you work at Stock Exchange and you've been there for two years and Stock Exchange, based on my opinion, because I don't know much about it, but it's all about data, all about technology, all about like fast real-time decisions. So what about your job? What do you do with data specifically? All right. So. So when I joined two years ago, there was no data team. So it's actually a fairly recent initiative. Um, we started by building the infrastructure, so making sure that all the data is in a centralized location. And then six months later, I got hired. And so I started from scratch. I built the team. I built the techno I decided the technology. I decided on the use cases. So the type of use cases. So so as the data team, we serve the whole company. So we serve our securities and derivatives market, but we also serve operation, technology, and regulation. So we have really a very wide range of problems to solve. So the first thing is trying to understand how people trade on the platform. So if, you're on, if we understand uh, their, their behavior on the platform, we are able to serve them better and recommend them better products. Then we also have a lot of things around text. So believe in it or not, we have a lot of data in text. So all the corporate actions. So when peop uh, when a company um, declare a new dividend or a new board of director, they have to send us the data, and they usually send it as a PDF. And we have like 1,000 PDF, uh, 1,000 pages PDF long, and we have all this data in there that we have to mine. But we also look at operations. So for example, latency is a really big issue for traders. They want to have their orders in the first, um, as fast as possible on the trading engine. So we make sure that there is no anomaly on the latency side. So it's really, really a very wide range of problems. And that's why I really like this, this position because really exposed to a, a wide range of different issues. Um, thank you so much. Let's go to Jen. Jen is uh, adver in uh, advertising and tech, Facebook, and she's a partner in uh, marketing science. So how, and I know that uh, we all know when we say Facebook and data, it's a little bit sensitive, yes. but uh, how is it from I your position? So yes, um, I won't be speaking about all those topics today. We don't have enough time, clearly. <laughs> um, no, what is your, what, from your position, how do you yeah. work with data? Yeah, so we're, we're working with clients, many brands that are represented here on, on the stage today, and, and I'm sure many of you in the room, on a daily basis to assess advertising effectiveness, right? Uh, so, so proving that out in, in various forms, um, on, on Facebook as a platform alone, Facebook properties, um, and, and kind of you know what we call cross-publisher, cross-media cross as well. So as we look at the relationships of advertising across digital and TV and, and where we can assess that. Um, uh, for me, uh, as Yana said, I'm, I'm a, a partner in, in what's called our marketing science department. Um, but there are there are many different departments where we, I have colleagues who focus um, a, a, and on data and data analysis. So whether it's day-to-day -day campaign management and assessment, um, it could be our business integrity team who's who's working um, with the platform and with our product teams to assess you know, bad actors on, on our various platforms. Um, it's, it's actual um, operations uh, analysts who are working with product to understand how you all are using our platforms so that we build better products for that very need. So there's many different 
roles that that en encompass data. Um, so as Yana said before, kind of you know touching on on everything. Um, me, the way the way I I face my role, I actually um, similar to Maggie, but a little different. Um, I my background is not in data analysis. I come from startup and large advertising um, agency background, and um, the way I well the the way my role came about um, was by by way of a reorganization when, when shortly after I joined Facebook. So I joined Facebook in an advertising uh, technology role. Um, and then uh, w obviously advertising technology is used to assess advertising effectiveness, right? So it only made sense that we reorged into to marketing science. Um, and with that, um, I was asked to move into this role. So my company made that, that request of me. Um, and at that time, I, I, I could have panicked. <laughs> um, but when you think about it, um, whether I was on the startup space before and building out models or on the advertising side before, always assessing my clients' data, um, it, it wasn't that much of a stretch. Yes, were there things I had to upskill on? Yes, I, I took the initiative to, to upskill and, and, and kind of go on data camp and, and, and work with my colleagues, ask them for help, you know, how, okay, Teach me R. Teach, teach me um, how, how to merge these data sets most effectively. Um, and, and you just have to, to, to find your way about it in that respect, I would say. If I were to give one piece of advice there, it would be don't let other people define you. You, you. you define what you want out of that yourself. So for me, I come at the role a little bit as a, as a data consultant. Um, I, I know what advertising agencies, what my clients need, the challenges they face in servicing their clients. Um, and I try to come at it from that angle. And I want to say Jen is our, um, I actually run community that is called She Loves Data. Do we have anyone here from She Loves Data? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> so what we try to, we try to raise awareness uh, about data and we try to say that, ladies, data is everywhere in every position, no matter what you do, you don't need to be in tech, you don't need to be in STEM. Uh, make sure, as you said, learn some basics around data because in that way you will be actually future-proofing your job. And uh, Jen reached out to us like a few months, uh, one and a half years ago actually, and uh, Facebook is our partner and helping us to you know, reach out to the women and help them to take this education for free. And I know Jen actually brushed up her SQL skills to be able to be one of the instructors, so that was fantastic. Now, thank you, Jen. Um, let's go to a different industry, industry that is as well as advertising and marketing full of data, and it's e-commerce. And I know you are one of uh, us here who as well studied computer science, so it comes natural to you. Uh, what is your role, and how are you guys using data? You have 50 people in your data science team, yeah, right? Yeah. Or data analytics team. Uh, data analytics team. So uh, my name is Du Juan. So I'm now uh, uh, working in Shopee, leading a team of around 50 people of data analytics team. So what we do, uh, what is the daily job in Shopee for data analytics team? Basically, we uh, utilize our data to support uh, both product and business. Uh, we know like uh, for a product uh, data-driven life cycle, it includes like design, uh, development, deployment, and analysis. So uh, for data analysis team, we participate a lot in the design and analysis uh, 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 stage. Uh, for example, right, uh, since we built our in-house uh, user tracking system, which is something very similar to Google Analytics, so we based on these user behavior data, uh, we uh, did a user journey analysis, and we found like um, if we simplify the user journeys to reach to our recommendation module, uh, the outcome will become better. So we give these suggestions to our product team, and product team accept. Then they design the new features and then release. So we finally value the outcome. It, it, the outcome is like the order number increased around 5%. So this is what is the impact of data. And in addition, right, for uh, e-commerce companies, we know uh, for user, uh, for people, uh, somehow it's a little bit hard for us to uh, find something on the platform, especially on some like 
ladies fashion dress. You see this piece of item, it's very nice, but I don't know how to uh, describe it. So um, yeah, we also provide this suggestion to our product. So we have the image search function, which allows you to take a picture and then search our, our platform to find your nice piece dress easily. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, how our daily life uh, uh, looks like. In addition, right, uh, in, from my opinion, another uh, uh, another area that would become more and more popular is about causal inference analysis. The reason is like uh, what we we are doing for the analysis right now. Most of them are correlation. Uh, so correlation somehow is very different from causals. Uh, for example, so here is a question, right? Whether attending this coding girls event can help me to find a better job? This, uh, this is a question, right? Maybe we can do some uh, studies based on the people who are attending this coding girl event. And we found, ah, it seems like it can help you to find a better job. But is it really uh, scientific? Because it might because the, the ladies, the girls who are attending this event is very talented. It's very smart, so they can find a better job. So um, causal inference analysis is another very interesting topic. And I think if you want to join the data area, you can start to learn these causal inference theories. And I think the market will need more and more people who, who can conduct this analysis. This is fantastic. I think you jumped into actually a real examples of how, how data-driven innovation can be run and how companies are doing that. Do you ladies have some example of a data-driven innovation? And let's, let's just simplify it for me uh, and for everyone here. Data-driven in innovation is something that we use data to create some results that help innovation in the business, right? Just let's simplify it like that. Uh, but how do you measure that? Do you have some examples of projects that your organizations put up out there based on data? data-powered innovation, and then you were able to measure right away the positive impact on the business? Anyone? It's um, there. So yeah, the way, the way we work with the data team is that every time we're scoping a project with the business, uh, we try to actually assess what, what would be the impact. And then we're running, uh, we're running a small-scale pilot uh, where we are actually seeing the impact of the model uh, before deploying it. So we are tracking all the time what is the business impact in order to also Makes transform sense. the business. But because also um, the team might be a bit tired about uh, evaluating all the time or quantifying all the time the impact, we're working on a what if tool um, that uh, will be able to automatically tell us what would be the impact of such a, a, a machine learning model be deployed in the organization. Any examples, one of you who can actually say what the impact was? Yeah, I, I mean, um, we've, we've been rolling out real, since we've had like real real-time live data coming in that every moment we know what's happening. You know, it's raining out there. You are sitting in Vivo City. You love Chinese food. You know, that kind of um, data about personalization, about how we can actually give our customers better offers of what, what they really need. Um, since rolling out a, a couple of the real-time models, like we, we rolled out one where um, we actually make them merchant offers that are most appropriate at that point in time. And then we rolled out... Um, um, another model where we offer financing when we know our customers just bought a large purchase uh, and, and actually would you like uh, 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 interest financing options and, and actually those two within a couple of months uh, and we always measure them it is very important to us in, a, in the banking industry to, to measure what, what we're getting in return so um, you know just a couple of a, a few months in a couple of markets because consumer has 17 so we tend to do pick which markets we go with, um, you know, two million additional sales just, oh. just in a couple of months. Fantastic. That's yeah. fantastic. You know, it is, it, and, and it's, I, I think, you know, one of the things about innovation is um, there's so much technology that's going, going coming out. Um, the difficulty isn't the technology, because the technology is there. It's actually finding the right products mm -hmm. and the right customer needs um, is, is about actually being customer obsessed. Um, that's actually going to be able to, and, and actually developing those products that actually 
does add value to your customers. And as well, maybe um, collect all the data that is useful because we collect so much data and it's all out there. But how do we define what type of data is useful for these type of innovation projects? Sigrid, you wanted to add something. Yeah, I think when you're not directly customer facing, it's harder to measure the impact of what yeah. you're doing. And so the way I approach it, I measure impact on the adoption. So I build a tool for someone inside the company. I build a dashboard. I build an analytic. I want to know whether they're using it. So I don't just build my model and that's it. So I go back to my customer, my internal customer, and ask them how it has helped help them. I also try to find ways to measure how often they have logged in into the dashboard or how often they have run the analysis. And I think that's, that's a little bit tricky for us because really we serve internal people and then they serve the customer. So it's a little bit more diluted. So we try to find interme intermediary measurements to, to see how we'll the adoption that is makes there. sense. That's that's actually very true. How do you measure is different for different industries and businesses. Jen, can you share a little bit about um, how you actually uh, drive the innovation so it gets to everyone within the organization? And I mean, because often what we see, we have a group of data scientists, group of data analysts, they are very aware of what kind of data is there, what kind of value it can bring. But how do you change the adoption process of the entire organization to work with the data in a smart way. Uh, because what I've seen um, with many of my clients have been working with data for 20 years is that it's easy to put the innovative products out there, but the adoption process of the organization to change the processes and mindset of people is the hardest part. And I know you guys are probably, or I have the impression you're good at that. Yeah. What, what are the key things yeah, to change? For us, it's not only the analysis involved, right? Because our analysis is informing our auction every, every day. So that's just a, a common practice there. Um, but it's actually using that analysis to, to educate and educate not only our clients, but the industry and the advertising industry and, and even even broader than that we're, we're having you know data-led conversations that are you know talking about advertising effectiveness and and why are we looking why are we looking at apples to apples comparison of ads on Facebook a video ad on Facebook versus a video TVC, right? It's, it's not apples to apples. And so, yes, we need to have benchmarks in the industry, but we're looking to kind of educate and bring about, well, this is the way people are, are using, you know, our platform, for example. Think about it. How, how many of you, you scroll rapidly like this, uh, you know, your Facebook news feed? Uh, yeah, you, you're a thumb scroller, okay? I, it's either thumb or index, usually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we find any other fingers, uh, I think you're an anomaly. But, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's using those insights, at, like I said, and not only informs um, advertising effectiveness and how marketers can use that data but also informs our, our product teams you know how how you all are using that's that's how we develop products it's funny when you hear in the the trades or just consumer publications sometimes oh why did why did Facebook roll this out this and that because that's how all you are behaving. Yeah, <laughs> We're exactly. following those trends, right? And um, maybe you're you're the anomaly. You're the outsider. That's not that's not on that trend. But that's that's um, that's kind of a very yeah, common way. Ma yeah. Makes definitely sense. Um, because we have not enough time. But uh, can we continue for five more minutes? Because I have like two very important questions based on my opinion. Um, innovation and diversity. Uh, because we are all women here and majority of women out there. Um, does it play any role on innovation, the diversity? You have 50 people in your team. You have 200 plus people in your team. How does it look like actually in your industries? You know, do you have enough women? Do you have enough diversity? Not only gender diversity, but you know, all the types of diversities. And does it have impact on innovation? Yeah, so uh, for my 50 people, right, uh, mostly half of them are women. So uh, I half think. Half of women? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Uh, because we are doing data analysis, right? You must be very careful because sometimes, uh, not, not, uh, maybe not uh, uh, fair to the men, right? But sometimes girls are more careful generating the numbers. So uh, my team. That's, a, that's a good summary. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think uh, it's very interesting for a team to, to contain a certain portion of ladies inside the team because the way of thinking is uh, very different, uh, especially e in e-commerce company. Why? Because women like shopping. 
Yeah, they, they can provide more creative ideas about how to design these e-commerce uh, products, how to utilize the data to provide suggestions. Yeah, so I think especially in e-commerce industry, I'm not quite sure about other industries. Let's yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we want ladies to join us to do the fancy data analysis uh, stuff. So this is a call out to you guys, you know. We are hiring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's let's do this promo because I know Maggie's hiring as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to shamelessly say I am always hiring, <laughs> hiring women in data. I, I've always been very, very passionate about women in technology. I, I actually run this uh, wo uh, Wizard SG um, uh, Women's Network with the Computer Society uh, on women in technology. Since coming into data, it. I've become more and more passionate about women in technology and women in data. Um, it's more than just actually having the having the woman's mindset when we are designing for customers. Um, it, there's an ethical part to it that a lot of our data that we use to do analytics has inherent bias on it. Um, and it's very, very important for us to actually create the, in the data community, enough women with the empathy and the attention to details and the, and the sense of community um, to actually make sure that we, we, don't, um, we don't go down the route of multiplying biases. Um, and especially when people now start talking about in data a lot of machine learning, um, and, and again, machine learning becomes very unpredictable some, sometimes, you know, unintended results, right? So um, it's very, very important to have warm, more women. I've just taken over my team, not enough women. So please come to me if, <laughs> if you are interested in joining data. Thank you. Yeah, this is um, uh, the, the ethical approach to machine learning and artificial intelligence is a big topic right now. So I think what you said play super important role. Jenny, you wanted to add on? Yeah, I will. I, I think, you know, we, we at, at Facebook I come from a little bit of a, a juxtaposition w with it because, you know, Jana mentioned <clears throat> when I reached out um, to her over a year and a half ago, it was on the basis of I attended our, our annual conference um, in, in uh, Silicon Valley and, you know, a panel like this up on stage of our senior leadership in, in marketing science globally. And we all pointed out the fact, even in, even the head of the organization, um, that, you know, only one of seven of those people on stage was, was a female. Um, and so I decided to kind of take that away and put it into action when I came back here. And so hence uh, reached out to, to Yana. Um, uh, you know, we, you know, we've been involved in, in many um, CSR initiatives together in that way, upskilling, um, educating, partnering together, and, and we're very fortunate at Facebook. On top of that, we actually have what we call a, a diverse slate initiative. Um, so it, it doesn't mean that you know we're we're going to hire you because you are a female and you get the edge that way, but at least the the interview process starts with. That, that diversity, right? So we have some rules around that in our interview loops. If you have four in an interview loop, at least um, one, or depending on the role, there are certain criteria, um, 25 to 50%. Um, should be should be of um, you know equal gender representation. Um, I also just came from an event this week um, where we have uh, women at Facebook, a Women Leadership Day, um, and we, we we not this year, but in the past we've had Cheryl Zamberg come out. We've had lots of senior representation come out, and we're very lucky to work at a at a company that that drives that. At the same time, um, we know in tech that that's a real challenge. And yeah. we, we know that we're still underrepresented. And to me, that's where the long tail comes in. Because you can't just say, go out and hire women on the spot, right? So long tail initiatives like Yana and others are involved in like this. Like, Thank you, like Coding this. Girls. Thank Coding you very girls, much. Exactly. Really matter. Yeah. So uh, I just want to add something because, like Elena said earlier, that we are 60 something women in, in, in AXA, and that's true. But most of the women are today doing a job that will disappear tomorrow. They're in operation. They're like uh, uh, sending claims or, you know, like filling yeah, they things take into more the more traditional system. kind of career path, right? And, and yeah, and today, most of those women's jobs will be automated tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. with the RPA coming along, with the data science and stuff. So this is why, for me, we we'll launched this super user initiative in the company to be able to upskill the people that had no data skill whatsoever uh, so they can be empowered by the data and maybe tomorrow become data analysts because otherwise those women would potentially lose their job in the, five, exactly. in the next five to ten years. So we need to take action now to prepare the women 
whoever they are or whatever the background to the word of tomorrow. So let's close this discussion by you ladies saying one sentence, okay, because the time is ticking. What would you advise to the audience here? One takeaway for them to get your jobs to get data-related jobs? Because you are the leaders in the industries, across industries, so what would you advise them? Stay curious. The field is moving so fast, and find that passion. That's Curiosity, it. ladies. I would say be bold. Everyone can learn about data. Be bold. I would say number itself means nothing. Just combine the numbers with business, with use cases. Be impactful and actually bridge the data and the business right the technology and the business be the bridge be the translator of that i'll build on maggie's a little bit develop um, a growth mindset it's, it's about um resilience and not necessarily endurance resilience resilience ladies and last but not least uh, to me would be get mentors but get both men and women. So you'll have both, both sides of the picture. So have a diverse mentors. Thank you so much, ladies. It's been a pleasure. All right, can we give them a round of applause?